Hey everyone. We had a request on YouTube for more informational videos about the different systems on the Ranger Tug R23. So what I'm going to do today, since it's really cold out, but I wanted to spend some time on the boat, I'm going to show you guys the 10 different water pumps that are on our Ranger Tug R23. I think you'll find it interesting. It'll help you understand where those systems are, what those systems do, and will help you if you ever need to troubleshoot any of those systems so you understand how things work on your boat. Let's kick off the music. Okay, the forwardmost pump on the boat is the head. This pump, while a lot of people don't think about it as an important pump, if something goes wrong with this pump, it will make for a pretty miserable trip and can be very inconvenient and something that if you haven't thought about beforehand could be a big problem. So I recommend you do some research on the Jabsco pump. There's some great videos out there by Jabsco. You can watch them understand how the pump works, what potential problems might be, how to fix a clog, read the documentation, and do everything you can to understand this before there's a problem because you can get to a resolution much quicker and do something that may uh, fix the problem while you're underway and instead of having to cancel a trip or deal with the issue uh, in a very uh, messy way. So very important pump on the boat. It's the one that's the furthest forward in the boat. And that is the head. Okay, the second pump we're going to talk about is the shower sump, which is located under the step that goes into the berth. To remove this panel, you'll see the shower sump sitting right there. There's good access to it. If you're going to open it up, you will need a short screwdriver to get to the back two screws on the box. But basically, it's a bilge pump in a box. The water flows from the shower drain into the box, water level rises, and then the box pumps overboard. So this pump, the important thing about this is if it's not working and you try to take a shower, it will back up, obviously cause a mess in the cabin, and it, there's no good way to get water out of this area outside of that shower sump box. So you'll be, you know, uh, trying to figure out a way to get water out of this compartment and out of your cabin if you don't have this working properly. All right, the third pump we're going to talk about is located under the compartment here, and that is the water pump. Directly under the sink, the base compartment, you lift up a panel, and there is your water pump. This pump handles the water for both sinks. Uh, in the R23 has a filter that you can see right here for to keep that clean as a new boat there may be some plastic particles and things but this pump uh, the only real maintenance issue you have with it aside from winterizing it if you need to is if you run the tank empty it will be noisy when you start it back up if you're interested in learning how to fix a noisy pump leave me a comment below and I'll do a video on that with decibel meters and the whole thing. So that's the water pump. It's located under the sink. All right, and located just to starboard of the water pump is the macerator pump. This is the pump that you can use when you're three miles offshore to pump out your black water tank. This uh, pump needs to be turned off when you're on most inland waters with a valve that I'll show you in just a second. But uh, important thing for this for us is, this is the same pump we use to empty our tank when we've gone to a local lake and we get home. I've got a system where I can pump, use this to actually pump out our black water into our septic tank. 
comes in really handy and uh, I'm really happy with the system we've set up there. So this has a switch at the console to turn it on and off, but in order to not accidentally discharge into uh, lake water or inland water, there's a valve. That valve is located on the shelf above with the green handle. You can see our valve is open right now because we pumped it out at the house. And obviously we would close that back when we go to the lake. All right, the fifth pump that we're gonna talk about is the raw water wash down pump. That pump allows you to take water from whatever you're in, the lake or salt water, whatever, and rinse off the deck or the anchor as you're pulling it up, those kind of things. We find it very handy for those type of purposes. And the port for the raw water wash down pump is on the port side next to the aft seat and right above it you'll find the switch for that pump as well as a fuse so right beneath the shore power plug and that's how you would turn on and utilize your raw water wash down pump so pumps six seven and eight are located in the center cockpit storage compartment and the first one to talk about as we're going front to back is the secondary bilge pump. This is the forward bilge pump. This bilge pump you hope never sees any water. Uh, if this pump is running, there is a problem with your boat because it should never see enough water to need to pump. Because you've got a primary bilge pump that is a low profile pump that sits at the at the very back of the boat and should catch any water and expel it overboard uh, up to a given point. You can see where we winterized it with the pink antifreeze. Uh, we have a little puddle in the boat there and a little sheen on top of that from moisture that's accumulated in the hole that's frozen on a day like today because it is pretty cold out. But the both these bilge pumps are automatic. They should come on and check for water every so often, two, two and a half minutes, something like that. And these are important safety measures that are run off of fuses in the 24 by 7 fuse block. And if you wait to the end of the video, I'll show you where that fuse block is. So you can always know where to find it if you need to troubleshoot anything that should always be on, even when the battery switches are off. The other pump in this area is the air conditioning pump. This pump is a 120 volt ac pump it's the only 120 volt ac pump on the boat and this pump is used in conjunction with the air conditioner it's controlled by the air conditioner comes on and off automatically but when your air conditioner is running you should see this pump working and pumping water uh, from the body of water that you're sitting in through the uh, port side strainer from the aft side through hole fitting and seacock to the pump, through the pump up to the AC and then overboard on the port side with the uh, through holes that are right there in a row above the water line. This pump is not working properly. Your AC pump won't work properly and it will drive you crazy. So always check when your AC is running, when you first put it in the water, if you think it might have lost its prime, you always want to check and make sure that you've got water going over the side of the boat through the through that through hole fitting when your ac first kicks in it may take a few minutes if it's lost its prime because it does take a while for it to catch and get all the air out of the system that's why we have the this filter turned down is to ensure that it's always full so that it doesn't create an airlock at that filter whereas with the toilet or the head pump and the um, raw water wash down pump goes through this filter and seems to work just fine in that orientation. But those are the three pumps in the main area, pump six, seven, and eight. Now we have to find pump number nine. All right, the ninth pump that's on the boat is located just forward of the engine in the engine pod, and that's called the pod bilge pump. So if we come into the, uh, open the hatch, you can see the bilge pump right there. That bilge pump is specifically for the, the engine pod. 
And if the engine pod gets water in it, obviously would pump it out. This pump has been a little finicky for me. I've had to basically clean the strainer, basically just by pointing a hose at the base of the pump to force any um, little particles or whatever from the manufacturing process out. And it has been working fine since. So it automatically pumps just like the other two and will we'll handle any water that happens to get into the pod while you're boating. The pod itself has its own drain plug. You always wanna make sure that's out when you're out of the water. And you can see where we've winterized this one as well. So that's pump number nine, the pod bilge pump. And by the way, the fuse for this is located on top of the battery. And that fuse is in an inline fuse just located there and you can always know you can pop that fuse out if you're going to be on the hard for a while don't want to drain the batteries or if you need to replace it for whatever reason all right and the tenth pump that moves water around on your ranger tug r23 is the water pump on your yamaha engine water pump is critical it's basically an impeller that pushes water up whenever the engine's running the drive shaft's moving and that pump keeps the engine head cool and operating safely. So while this won't sink your boat, it definitely will shorten the lifespan of your engine and cause you to have a really bad day at some point. So you always wanna make sure you're minding the maintenance requirements for your impeller. You always wanna make sure when your engine's running, you can see the water ejection port, uh, basically ejecting water uh, like it should and make sure that you understand when it's time to change the impeller and get that maintenance done as required. So I promised if you stayed to the end of the video I'd show you where the 24 by 7 fuse box is located. So if you are looking at your electrical panel the fuse itself, fuse box itself is located behind this panel and this panel you can simply pull from the base and once you pulled it out you can find it right there so this panel is always on it doesn't matter what's going on with the battery switches or anything if you want to completely eliminate any electrical draw you got to take the fuses out of this panel too or disconnect your batteries but this is intended for all those always on devices like bilge pumps and the only always on device that's not located on this 24 7 panel like i said is the bilge pump in the pod and that is located on the battery so there you have it there's 10 water pumps front to back on a ranger tug r23 and if, you, if you're like us and you came from, say, a, a bow rider or runabout with no water pumps on it and you get a Ranger Tug, it can really seem intimidating because really what you have are all the systems of a much larger boat on a Ranger Tug R23. So getting to know those systems is always good. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you do, I would appreciate it if you'd like the video, subscribe to our channel, share it with your friends. We're not trying to build some big money-making channel here. We're just trying to share information for you all. And I hope you enjoyed the video. If you do, the feedback always helps encourage us to do more. Thanks for watching.